Hello, fellow humans. Welcome to the Milk of Arhumla. I didn't want to have to make another COVID-19 video so quickly, but here I am doing it. And the reason for that is um, that the video I posted a couple days ago, things have really changed around here just in a couple of days. Um, and I, my disclaimer is I really don't want to overwhelm everybody with COVID-19 news. You know, I think it's good to be well informed, but at the same time, I think an oversaturate saturation of news and focus on things to a minute detail doesn't do anybody really any good. But I kind of feel a responsibility um, having studied psychological and medical anthropology. It's kind of my my uh, my specialty and, and in my ballpark. So I kind of feel a responsibility to say something. And also I wanted to update the information that I gave just a couple of days ago. So just to kind of fill you guys in who, who don't normally watch the channel, um, I live in Peru. Uh, like five days ago, I um, crossed the border from Ecuador back into Peru um, after entering Peru. Um, and things were really laxed, especially at the Peruvian border. Ecuador was a little more um, cautious, it seemed. There was health screenings. They were checking people's temperatures and things like that. But Peru had nothing going on. So just uh, the day before yesterday, um, the president here in Peru um, declared a state of emergency for two weeks. Um, I think that's going to be extended because I work with um, kids, school kids in from China and things did not get better in two weeks there. Um, it took a month before things started to get better. And just in the last couple of weeks, my students, um, parents have started going back to work. Um, people are starting to move around in the cities again and stuff. Now, China had put things on a complete lockdown. Now, and that's what the president here in Peru wants to do. Um, it's not happening. And one of the reasons for that is, at least in the communities that I've lived in, and the communities that I've lived in are, are poor communities. I haven't lived in any uh, areas that get high amounts of tourist traffic or where a lot of foreigners live or where a lot of people with money live. And one of the things that, that ha is um, prevalent in these communities is people buy food for that meal. You will see people leave their houses three times a day to buy food for breakfast and then go to the store again to buy food for lunch and then go to the store again to buy food for dinner. They don't keep food in their houses. They just don't keep a uh, stocked up supply of food in their houses. And that's causing big problems um, in some of the um, more upscale communities in Lima and Cusco, what's happening is they're issuing um, travel cards for one person per family um, to go to the store and buy food. Now in these poor communities, it's a free for all. People are leaving their houses as they see fit, intermingling as they see fit. Um, there's really, they're not taking anything very seriously. Um, and that could pose a problem. It's really hard to control. I have not seen any police up here in the barrio where I live at all since this started. And people are just traveling around like normal. Now, businesses have closed um, down at the marketplace. Um, they're, they're closing restaurants and things like that. So that's happening. But people are still moving freely house to house, intermingling with people. And they're not washing. Um, so... This is a Petri dish, <laughs> and so we'll see what happens. Now, I just read a news report uh, of, a, of a couple from Canada, and the Canadian government has asked all their, um, uh, their citizens who are traveling to come home, to come home now. Well, that's nearly impossible at this point. And um, they, were, they were interviewed for the, for the news article, and they were saying how they were in Cusco, and there's mobs in the street rioting and the, the military are out and it's just crazy. And we've seen some of that on the news of um, people trying to break into stores and, and really mobbing around stores and stuff, uh, not keeping their social distance and things like that.
So that's kind of an update. Um, you know, we're fine. We haven't seen anybody sick. There's, I think Peru reached 117 cases today. And really only four of them are hospitalized. Um, a couple of, a couple more are in a little bit more serious condition. But again, you know, this is, this is a virus that if you're, if you're healthy, um, and you take, are able to take good care of yourself, you should be able to get through it. All right. You know, um, so and that seems to be what's happening here in Peru. Yeah, I had one of my students from China this morning. I hadn't seen him in a couple of months. I'm like, well, you know, I haven't seen you in a while. You know, what was going on? And he had flown to Hawaii for for a class, a workshop, um, right when the Corona, right when the COVID nineteen hit in China, and he wasn't able to come back into China, and so we had to stay in Hawaii for two months. And just recently, China lifted its restrictions and its citizens are coming back home now because things are getting much better there. And that I think that's something that we can learn from China. When Once they decided to act, they shut things down and um, they put a whole quarantine around Wuhan where it started. And my families, I work with probably about 20 families on a regular basis and they were not leaving home. Like one, same thing, one person would go and buy food and they'd buy food for weeks at a time. You know, uh, me and, and my um, um, partner, we have stocked up and we're good to go. We're just going to ride the storm out here for as long as it takes, you know, and, and we're a little bit more used to doing that. Um, so, you know, part of this channel is I want to switch gears. So that was just kind of an update. I wanted to update because the information I'd given a couple of days ago has just really changed. I didn't want to leave people with a false impression. So another part of this channel is the Milk of Arhumla. And it's taking care of ourselves in a changing world. And one of the things I've been talking about is being self-reliant and self-sufficient and how to do that. And here's another big example. You know, if you're living in such a way where you have a garden, where you have some small livestock, and that could be things as small as guinea pigs. You know, cooey here are very popular. Rabbits, um, chickens for eggs. And I had, you know, I've had one laying hen that could lay one to two eggs a day. And that's enough to sustain two people. And if you have, if you're able to get some kind of grain somewhere or, or buy large amounts of grain, Things like this become a lot easier to weather. And that's one of my points. Things like this are going to continue. And they may even get worse. And that's something to think about. That's just another reason why this self-reliant lifestyle of being able to grow food, of being able to create and store energy, of being able to store water, to be able to capture water, to be able to deal with your waste, this is a prime example. So anyway, I just want to leave you with that. I feel weird saying this, but if you like this channel, please click, click like. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And if you feel like supporting, support it on YouTube. So, you know, take care of yourselves, people. Eat right. Take care of your health. Um, take care of your loved ones. Don't travel if you don't absolutely have to. Stock up on necessities. Be smart get vegetables, get good food, make sure you secure your water source, keep clean, clean your house, take care of your pets, okay? And we'll all be okay, and we'll weather this, and we'll all be fine, okay? So as always, fellow humans, stay human, and we'll see you soon.